In this video, we are going to look at the topic of kinematics and how it appears in some common IB maths problems. And it's all to do with the maths behind moving objects. So things that have a displacement or a velocity or an acceleration. So it's things that are moving in real life. So the three functions that we need to be aware of in kinematics are the displacement function, displacement, now, displacement is going to be expressed as S of T. You see S used for displacement. They have velocity function. Velocity. This will be V of T. And acceleration. Acceleration, which will be A of T. Now, we really need to understand what displacement means in order to understand what velocity and acceleration means. Displacement is the distance you were away from your original starting point. And the best example I can use is if you wanted to start here and get to point B, so start at point A and get to point B. If I were to do a zigzaggy journey and get to here, the distance would be the entire distance of this line. If I were to stretch it out, that would be the distance I were to travel. But the displacement is just how far away we are from our original spot. So the displacement would actually just be from here to here. You might hear someone say the bird's eye, the distance from the bird's eye. If they were to look down, it would be just from here to here. So that's displacement. Uh, it actually is very important when our objects are changing direction. So if I had, if I had a start line here and I were to travel 50 meters one way, and then I were to run back and finish where I started, my total distance would be 100, but my displacement would be zero because I am where I, I finished where I started. So my displacement is how far away I am from my original position, it would be zero. Okay, so that's what displacement is. Velocity is then just displacement over time and acceleration is just velocity over time. So velocity is very similar to speed, but uh, the speed of something is the distance over time but velocity is displacement over time. Okay, so you're going to get given these three functions when you're doing these types of questions. And what we need to do is if we get given the displacement function and we want to know the velocity function, if we want to go from one to the other, we need to derive, we need to derive the function. So the derivative of displacement is velocity. And the derivative of velocity is acceleration. So if we want to go down this chain of kinematics functions, we need to derive. If we want to go up the chain, so for example, if they gave us an acceleration function and we want to find the velocity function, we need to integrate the opposite of deriving. Integrate and the same thing here. If we want to go from velocity to displacement, we integrate. Now, we've probably seen derivatives and integrals by now. We know that we can derive if we have a function just by using our deriving rules. And if we want to integrate, we know that we'll have a plus C when we integrate. So we will often get given some information to find the C. So if they give you the acceleration formula, A of T is equal to something, and they want you to find the velocity function, we know we need to integrate, uh, but they might also give you some known of velocity at some time such that you can find the C value. So these questions, they do require some practice, uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's just deriving and integrating different types of functions. I did want to look at one example though, uh, and we'll just comment on this example. This is a velocity curve, and you're going to have to deal with velocity displacement and acceleration curves in this topic. So this is a velocity curve, and I want us to sort of think about what's happening to this object throughout the first six seconds of this journey. Now, what this what this is saying is at the very start, the velocity starts off at negative four, and we're just going to assume meters per second. Now, what does a negative velocity mean? Well, it means that it has a speed of four meters per second, but because it's negative, it will be traveling backwards or traveling in the, in the negative direction. So that's what's important if you have a negative velocity, it's actually traveling backwards. And even though it does a bit of a dip here, it goes up and it comes back down and then comes back up, this doesn't mean it's changing direction because in this whole zone here, it has a negative velocity. And if it has a negative velocity, it is traveling backwards. Now, the fact that it goes up and goes back down and goes back up, it just means that it's accelerating and deaccelerating, the decelerating, uh, 
but still going backwards. So it's very important to realize that. It's only going to be at this point here where it turns from a negative velocity to a positive velocity. So that's when it's actually stopped going backwards and now it starts to go forwards and it will go forwards for this period of time here until it goes backwards again. So a common question they ask in these IB exams, if they give you a velocity curve is, is they'll say, how many times does our object change direction? And I do see a lot of students, they say, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Unfortunately, that's not correct because they only change direction when the velocity goes from negative to positive, which will be here and here. So only twice will our object change direction. Now, also a common, uh, a common question is what will be the distance, the total distance traveled, if they give you a velocity curve. Now, the total distance traveled, what we need to think about is from here all the way to here, the distance is going to be related to the displacement, and, th and that's the integral of the velocity. So, if we're integrating a function, we can find the area under the curve or above the curve. So, if we find this area here by integration, our integration techniques, this is going to be a negative area. And that kind of makes sense because we were traveling backwards. So, the total distance, which would be this area, is going to be a negative value because we traveled in the negative direction. But then what happens is in this zone here, if we find this area, we're going to be traveling forwards some distance. And then in this area here, we'll be traveling backwards some distance. So the key information, oh, what, what I'm trying to get at here is that you need to be careful if the question's asking for the total displacement or the total distance. Because if it's asking for the total distance, we need to get this, this area here, which is a distance that they traveled backwards. And we need to make this positive. You need to assume, okay, well, if this was negative 50, we did travel 50 meters, so we, we spent that energy or we spent that petrol or gasoline to do that. And then we traveled this much, this distance forward, so we have to add that to 50. And then even though this is negative, we'll have to add that. And once you get a bit more competent with this topic, you'll realize that, that distance is going to be the integral of velocity when the function is made positive and they put these absolute value signs around the velocity. And what that is doing is it's making all of these areas positive. And that's going to be different to the displacement, which is just the integral of the velocity. And the displacement will, will actually calculate this area as negative, this is positive, this is negative to get the net distance, which, which was displacement. So once you are, once you are in the advanced section of this topic, this, difference here is very important. Total distance traveled is the integral where the, the function is made positive, but the displacement is just the integral of our function. Okay, so once once you've practiced a few of these questions, I hope you get to this section here and you, you have a think and you think mm, there is a difference between the distance and the displacement. But the main, the main things to think about are the three main functions, displacement, velocity, acceleration. If you want to go down the chain, we derive. If you want to go up the chain, we integrate. And we can find a bunch of really, really useful information about moving objects. Okay, good luck.